Today I'll be solving the ninth team's challenge on Ethernaut called Alien Codex. This is a fun challenge where you will need to have some knowledge about older versions of Solidity and how state variables are laid out inside a smart contract. The goal of this challenge is to claim ownership of the contract below. So I'll copy this code over to my code editor and then deploy a new instance for this challenge. I've copied the code over from Ethernaut over to my code editor. Again, the goal of this challenge is to claim ownership of the contract below. First thing to notice is that this contract inherits another contract called Ownable, which we do not have access to. To make this challenge a little bit easier for you, I'll give a hint that the first state variable inside this contract is an address type called Owner, and it is declared inside the Ownable contract. So the goal of this level is we need to set the Owner state variable to message.sender. But notice that we don't have any write access to the state variable owner. So how can we override it? Let's take a look at some public functions that we have access to. Scrolling down, I'll highlight the keyword public. Has a function called make contact. Has a function called record that pushes something to an array called codex. Array of bytes 32. There's a function called retract which will decrease the length of the array codex by one. In Solidity 0.8, we use the pop to remove the last element from an array. However, if I remember correctly, one way you can remove an element from an array before Solidity 0.8 was by this syntax, decreasing the length of the array by one. So that is why you see a codex.length.. Minus minus. And if I scroll up, I can see that the Solidity version for this contract is 0.5. So that is why this syntax works. Editing the length of the array, is the same as removing the last element from an array. And then lastly, we have a function called revise. This function will allow us to update the if element of codex and set it equal to content from the input. But before we can call this function revise, there is a modifier called contacted. And if I scroll up, the modifier contacted checks that contact is equal to true. How do we make this equal to true? It's simply by calling the function make contact. So we first need to call this function make contact, and then we'll be able to call this function revise. Okay, with that in mind, how can we update the owner state variable? Again, the owner state variable will be the first state variable inside this contract stored at the zeroth slot. How can we update this? Remember before Solidity 0.8, numbers overflowed and underflow without any errors. So what does this mean? Well, what happens if we call the function retract when the length of codex is equal to zero? When this array is still empty, and then we call the function retract, it will do a minus on zero. So that will be an underflow. When you decrease zero by one, you get minus one. Or this is equal to two to the 256 minus one. And what this means is that we now have an array of length two to the 256 minus one. And recall that how state variables are like an array of length two to the 256 minus one. In other words, by calling this function, we will have write access to all of the state variables inside this contract. Okay, let me put this in code and further explain what I mean over here. So I'll call this contract hack. And then we'll execute all of our code inside the constructor. Constructor. The contract alien codex inherits a contract called ownable, which we do not have access to. So if we just copied all of this code into Remix, then it will not compile. To make this code work also for Remix, I'm going to declare an interface here and then copy all of the code inside here over to Remix. The rest of the code I will not copy. So I'll say interface, I'll name it I alien codex. And then whatever function that we need to call for alien codex, I'll also declare here. And inside this hack contract, I'll use the I alien codex constructor, I alien codex, I'll name it target. And then what we're going to do is call retract but it has a modifier called contacted. So first thing that I'll do is call the function make contact. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it here inside the interface and this will be external. So the first function that we will need to call is target dot make contact. Once we call this function, we now can call the rest of the function record, retract and revise. Now, remember that I said that on an empty array, on an empty codex array, we're going to call retract and this will set the length of this array to 2 to the 256 minus 1. So I'll say over here, target dot retract. Let's go over how the state variables inside the alien codex are laid out 
before we call the function retract and then afterwards. What does the storage data look like before we call the function retract? On slot 0, we'll have the owner. This will be 20 bytes. And since every slot can take up to 32 bytes, we still can fit another state variable. If it is less than 20 bytes, owner is 20 bytes, what is the next state variable? The next state variable is contact. It's a Boolean, so that will only take up one byte. So contact takes up one byte. Okay, what is inside slot one? Slot one will be, it is a dynamic array of bytes 32 called codex. For arrays, it would store the length of the array on slot one, on the slot where it is declared. So here will be length of array codex. So where are the array elements actually stored? Well, the array elements are stored starting from the kachak256 hash of the slot where the array was declared. So the array is declared for slot 1. So the starting position of the array element, let's call it h, will be kachak256 of 1. So at slot h, this will be codex 0. At slot h plus 1, this will be codex element 1. At slot h plus 2, this will be codex element 2, and slot h plus 3, this will be codex element 3, and so on. Now, when we call the function retract on an empty array, this will set the length of this codex array to 2 to the 256 minus 1. So, starting from h, the last slot will be slot h plus 2 to the 256 minus 1. This will be codex of 2 to the 256 minus 1. In a smart contract, there are 2 to the 256 slots. However, notice that codex takes up 2 to the 256 slots, but we're already using two of them, slot 0 and slot 1. This means that some parts of this slot will have to overlap with slot 0 and slot 1. So if we can find the index, that will be h plus i, where it lands on slot 0, then we can overwrite slot 0. What we're looking for is an index i such that slot h plus i will be overlapped with slot 0. Let's do some math. So h plus i is equal to 0. So we're solving for i. So i is equal to 0 minus h. And that will be the index of the array codex that we'll need to overwrite to overwrite slot 0, which contains the owner state variable. OK, so let's write this in code. Let's first compute the slot h. This will be kachak256 of abi.encode uint256 of 1. Since we're dealing with index, we'll need to make this into uint, uint256. And then we'll name this uint256h. This will be the index of slot 0. And then we'll say uint i is equal to the slot that overrides slot 0. And what is this index equal to? This index is equal to 0 minus h, or simply minus h. Since we're going to be doing this inside Solidity 0.8, we're going to have to disable the underflow. So I'll say unchecked, and then say i is equal to minus h. OK, once we computed the index that will overwrite slot 0, what is the next step? The next step is to call the function revise. And for the second input, bytes32, we'll need to pass in message.sender. So first, I'll copy this function signature and then paste it here inside the interface external. And then we'll call the function target.revise on index i. And then for the second input, we want to pass message.sender. And then we'll need to cast this into bytes32. So to do that, we first need to cast message.sender into uint256. And to do that, we first need to cast it to uint160. So uint160 message.sender. Next, cast this to uint256. And then lastly, cast this to bytes32. And that should overwrite the owner state variable, but let's double check. So. Here, I'll declare a getter function for the owner, function owner external view returns address. And then over here, we'll say require target.owner is equal to message.sender, else hack failed. OK, that completes our contract. The next step is I'm going to copy this code over to Remix. 
I'm inside Remix and I copied the code over from my code editor. Let's try compiling this contract. Hit Ctrl S and the contract does not compile. If I scroll down, I see an error over here. If I scroll back up, I have not defined this function retract inside the interface. So I'll say function retract external. Okay, let's try compiling the contract again. Hit Ctrl S again and the contract compiles. The next step is to get the address of the contract for alien codex. Back inside Ethernet, I'll type F12, but then get the contract address from the browser console. Paste it here inside Remix, and let's now deploy the hack contract. So click on deployment tab, make sure that you're connected to the testnet, and then we'll deploy the hack contract. So I'll copy the address of the alien codex, and then make sure that I've selected the hack contract, and deploy this hack contract with the address of the alien codex. Click deploy and then confirm transaction. The transaction was successful so this means that we were able to successfully overwrite the state variable owner and you can see that this is so since at the last step of the constructor we checked that the owner is now equal to message.sender. The last step of this challenge is to submit our instance. Once you beat this level you'll see the button change to go to next level.